Welcome to our Digital Church online service from the East Surlington Downs Methodist Circuit here in the south of England. We're so glad that you've tuned in. I'm David Arnott. Perhaps you're not able to get to church on Sunday for one reason or another. Or maybe you just wanted to take some time out in the middle of the week to listen to God's word to pray for others and yourself, and to worship the living God. And with the aid of modern technology, we can gather, gather virtually to pray, praise, and listen to God's word. If this is your first time watching this channel, we'd like to give you a special welcome. There are many churches online, but you chose ours, and we thank you for that. And wherever you are on your journey of faith, we hope and pray that you will find this service helpful. Verse 1 of Psalm 46 says, He, God, is an ever-present help in time of trouble. No matter what it may look like, Christians believe that God is in control. He remains faithful forever. Psalm 146 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. Praise the Lord. And we sing our praises with Sing of the Lord's Goodness. Come to him and bless his name. Mercy. 
We have a privilege, the privilege of being able to come to God, our Father in prayer. We can talk to God. We can come to God with thankful hearts, but we need to come to prayer with repentant hearts, to say sorry, to bring to God the things we know we need forgiveness for. St Paul says, be imitators of God, love as Christ loved, do not grieve the Holy Spirit, put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice. So in a moment of silence, let's recall the past week the ways in which we fail to love those around us, family, friends, neighbours, the way in which we fail to love our world and our God. The response to Father forgive us is save us and help us. So let us confess our sins to God who forgives us in Christ for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father forgive us, save us and help us for behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. 
for failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. To all and to each, where regret is real, God promises pardon and grants the right to begin again. Amen. Thanks be to God. Praise be to you, O God, the maker of the universe, by whose wisdom we are created and sustained. Praise be to you, O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose love we are redeemed and forgiven. Praise be to you, O God, the source of all holiness, by whose Spirit we are made whole and brought to perfection. Praise be to you, O God, source of all being, eternal Word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is St Mark chapter 12, beginning at verse 41. Let us pray. Father, as we read and hear your word, let us hear your voice speaking to us. Give us wisdom to understand your message to us. Let your word be the joy of our hearts and a light to guide us on our journey of faith. Give us strength to build our lives on your word. Amen. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Oscar Wilde in Lady Windermere's Fan described a character as a person who knew the price of everything and the value of nothing, who knew the price of everything and the value of nothing. Do you think Jesus might have smiled at that comment? In our reading from Mark 12, there is a, a stark contrast and in order to understand the reading more fully, it helps to know a little about the setting, the temple in Jerusalem. There would have been several trumpet-shaped, jar-shaped offering containers for people to put their money in. It's probable that large gifts would have made a resonant rattle as they tumbled their way down. The larger the gift, the louder the noise. 
and we're told that many, many rich people put in large sums. Then Jesus sees a woman enter. A woman who's defined according to the conventions of the time, only by her marital status or rather lack of it. The widow shows immense courage and faith. Now, we don't know if she made the gift after prayerful consideration or it was just a habit to give more than she could afford when visiting the temple. In our reading, the translation, which are worth a penny, is near the mark. The widow's gift represented a tiny fraction of a normal day's wage. Yet for some people, even this small amount would make a difference to a day's living. If giving is measured by what a person has left over, then the widow had given generously indeed for her giving had cut into her daily survival, into the rations that kept her alive. Yes, the widow's coins would have fallen more gently, yet for Jesus her gift spoke loudly, declaring that here was a heart and life devoted to God. He valued what she had offered. He valued it above the larger gifts of the wealthier people. Jesus heard the slight sound of the widow's tiny coins set against the precious gifts given by wealthy donors. The widow quietly gives all that she has, while the rich give what is showy and obvious. Her offering will outlast the more visible. Her generosity will be treasured by God. The widow gives and Jesus shows tender compassion towards one whose status was among the lowest in the society at that time. We may sometimes overlook the little things in favour of showier gestures. It's easy to measure ourselves against others. Doing so might make us feel inadequate or to think that God wants only the biggest and the best. When we feel that we have little to offer, we are probably closer to God than when we believe that we have done something wonderful. People who are generous out of limited resources are a shiny example to the rest of us. We should thank God for them. Jesus surely did. Often the Bible is misquoted as saying money is the root of all evil. Actually, 1 Timothy chapter 6 warns that the love of money is the root of all evil. Without loving money, we must live with it and use it as well as possible. Giving is part of that stewardship. Acts 20 verse 34 tells us that giving is a privilege. And 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 reminds us that God loves it when we give gladly. When we 
think or speak of poverty, then it's fairly easy to reach an agreement on what it is. It's when the resources we have are insufficient and inadequate for supporting the most basic level of survival. On the other hand, when we think of abundance, what might be described as plentifulness and prosperity, it becomes difficult to reach any agreed objective measure. We each have our own internal means for determining what we think abundance is. Jesus finds merit in poverty. He commends the widow who gives to God despite her poverty. In other words, she gave what she could not afford. As a passing thought, does poverty only relate to financial wealth? Does abundance only relate to the amount of money we have? I recall as a choir boy, yes, many years ago, singing the Magnificat at Evensong, the song that Jesus' mother sang. His mercy is on them that fear him, from generation to generation. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exhorted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. Would Jesus have remembered the song his mother sang? The needy honoured, and the rich sent away empty? Yes, another example of the upending of the usual ways of this world, turned upside down by the coming of the Kingdom of God. Which of us would consider the option of emptying our savings account and giving it all in obedience to what we believe are God's purposes? The reassuring truth at the heart of this story is this. God notices our sacrifices. He's not distracted by the loudest voice, the flashiest credit card, the most senior rank. This woman came to the temple humbly and unheralded and gave everything. Jesus saw what she had done and drew others' attention to her actions. Perhaps, who knows, some of those he told about her were moved to offer her help. As we come to a time of prayer, let's listen to the words written by Graham Kendrick. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in your suffering world, this is our prayer. For brokenness, hope for despair Lord, in the suffering, this is our prayer Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase 
Better for fragile lives, cures for their ills. Work for the craftsmen, trade for their skills. Land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak. Voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, let tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Sanctuary, freedoms to share. Peace to the killing fields, scorched earth to green. Christ for the bitterness, His cross for the pain. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion. For like rain, come change our love from a spark to a flame. Rest for the ravaged earth, oceans and streams, plundered and poisoned, a future and Carelessness, greed Make us content with the things that we need God of the poor, friend of the weak Give us compassion, we pray Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain Come change our love from a spark to a flame Lighten our darkness, breathe on this flame Until your justice burns brightly again Until the nations learn of your way Seek your salvation and bring you their praise. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark. Change our love from a spark to a flame. Our first prayer is as the leaders of nations come together at this time for COP26 in Glasgow to combat the climate change and environmental destruction. We pray. Wonderful Creator, we pray thanks that the earth is the work of your careful and creative hand and we marvel at the beauty 
of the planet we call home. We are sorry for all the ways in which we have treated your creation with contempt and neglect. For the ways we prevented both human and non-human life from flourishing. We ask that you would help us as we seek to treat your creation with the respect it deserves. We pray that as the leaders of the world meet at COP26, the global Methodist family would proclaim, we believe in climate justice for all. We ask for humility as we listen to those whose lives are being directly impacted by the climate crisis. We ask for courage as we call upon our political representatives to work internationally towards a better future. We ask for stamina as we work within our own communities to ensure our lives do not scar your creation. Amen. Lord, come as the light. Lord, we pray for those whose lives are trapped by the darkness of fear. For those facing a time of uncertainty, illness and the fear that comes from not knowing. For those known to us in hospital and those undergoing unpleasant treatment. For those who wait through dark days of anxiety. Lord, in the darkness, come as the light. Lord, we pray for those in the darkness of loneliness. For those left alone, now the family have gone. For those who spend their days in the prison of their home and long for someone to visit, to break into the silence of their aloneness. For those who with the passing years have only their memories and no one with whom to share them. Lord, in the darkness, come as the light. Lord, we pray for those in the darkness of doubt, for those who long to believe, to have faith, to trust, for those with questions they cannot answer, and for those whose doubts are simply tearing them apart, for those whose ability to trust has been damaged by the behaviour of others, and for those whose faith is in their heads and not in their hearts where it is meant to be. Lord, in the darkness, come as the light. Lord, we pray for those whose lives have been touched by your grace and whose days are set ablaze with your love. For those whose faith in Christ is daily being renewed and the light of the Father's presence fills them with hope, peace and joy from within. For those for whom the light of the Spirit is the source of their strength, their compassion and trust. And for those who are daily committing themselves to be beacons of light in Christ's name. Lord, in the darkness, come as the light. We pray too for ourselves, that the light of Christ will find its way even into the darkest corners of our lives, 
that we might walk in the light of Jesus' love, upward, inward, outward and forward. Lord, in the darkness, come as the light. Thank you for joining us and if you've heard something that you'd like to talk to us about please do contact us. Details of how to do so are on the very last screen of this service. So we come to our final prayer. Father, please teach us to find our security in your immeasurable love, in seeking first your kingdom and righteousness in striving to be your good and faithful servants, through your Son, 
our Lord and example. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, for ever and ever. And may the blessing of God, creator, redeemer and sustainer, rest and remain on each one of us, now and always. Amen. <laughs>